Hi gang, my name is Rob. Gang, why do I say gang? That's so weird. My gang. Uh, hi guys, my name is Rob and this is Pea Puffer Kingdom. This is episode eight. And today we are going to be looking at feeding the peas. What to feed, when to feed, how often to feed, and different ways that we can feed them. Also, I'm going to be looking at when you've got a pea puffer that's maybe getting bullied out of uh, feeding, how to target feed them, different ways to make sure that they are getting the food. So not talking internal parasites, not eating but they're just generally getting bullied out of food by the bigger peas, um, which seems a bit of a, an oxymoron in itself. And uh, looking at how we can get food to them when they're struggling a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed this. Before I start, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's subscribing to the channel, um, liking, commenting. It all makes a huge difference to get this channel out there. My first video introduction to pea puffers has now got over 800 views, which is mental. Uh, obviously in YouTube terms, that's kind of, you know, not loads, but for me, that's that's a big deal. So thank you so much to everyone that's liking, uh, subscribing, commenting. If there's any other types of videos I haven't done that you want to see me do, then leave that in the comments section. Um, also in this video today, we're gonna be looking at these cute guys and uh, the fun ways to feed them. So with snails, what we can do to make them hunt them rather than just plonk them in the middle of the tank, which is a bit boring for us and for them. So ways to kind of enrich their eating. And with the blood worms, we're gonna look at using a feeding cone for them and uh, how they react to that. So thank you for watching guys and I hope you enjoy the episode. Okay, so let's kick off with what types of food you can feed. Now we've got the live food here. And as you can see on this side, excuse the shadows, we've got live blood worms. Ugh. And uh, these guys are something that my pea puffers really enjoy. Although like with most pea puffers, they all seem to have different types of um, diets that they like. So some mainly go for snails. I've got one that only really goes for uh, brine shrimp. I've got one that goes for everything, which is very handy, but they really do have quite particular diets. So I've had to kind of, over the last few months of keeping them, keep an eye on what likes to eat what and feed them accordingly. So that's the blood worms. Keep those in the fridge. When you open these packets of uh, live food, they generally last for about a week or so. So it's pretty good that these only cost a pound. I'm guessing they don't cost too much different in, uh, in the US. They're really great to uh, feed the fish with. So the next one we've got here is brine shrimp. Yes, brine shrimp. As you can see there, swimming around, moving about. They're kind of like sea monkeys. They might even be sea monkeys. I'm not sure 100%, but they're pretty much the same thing. So if we can kind of uh, get this thing to focus at a decent level. Yes, and similar to the blood worms, most of my pea puffers enjoy the brine shrimp. There's one or two that just don't seem to want to know. They'll just pretty much watch them glide past. But uh, they, they're not the most nutritious food for the pea puffers, but they're actually really good to give them every so often. So I get these probably every three days, I guess because I need one of my pea buffers, he'll eat pretty much just brine shrimp and snails. So whilst I'm feeding the blood worms, I put a few of these in as well. And similar to the blood worms, um, I keep them in the packets probably for about a week, week and a half, they can last sometimes. Um, but I keep the brine shrimp in the actual packet. So I cut the top of the packet and leave them in the packet, just scoop it out with like a little teaspoon. Uh, not one that I use in the coffee cups, because that'd be gross. And that way, all the fluid that they come in, they stay in that and they, they last really well. I started putting them in a, in a pot a while ago and then adding tap water, which is kind of stupid, uh, looking back at it. But as you can see, these guys still very much alive and raring to go and looking forward to be eaten up by all the delicious pea puffers. Something else you can feed the pea puffers that's live food, you can feed them, uh, I think they're called cope pods or copy pods. They're not too dissimilar to brine shrimp or daphne, they're kind of somewhere in between. They're very, very small. They're probably closer to daphne, I imagine. And um, get that to focus. And the only problem with their copiapods is that they're so small that my pea puffers usually eat them within about a minute and then they're hungry still. So unless you've got a baby pea puffer, which is quite rare, I would suggest probably not feeding copiapods just because you'll get for a whole pack in one sitting and you end up spending loads of money. Uh, every week I'm feeding them. Something else you can feed them uh, that's live, there's um, 
white worms, black worms. In the UK, they don't really sell them, to be honest, which is a bit annoying. I haven't seen any. I think there might be a lot of people breeding them. But uh, in the States, I know a lot of people have uh, black worm or white worm, which is, uh, I think white worm is the most nutritious for them. But um, let's move on to frozen food now. Looking at frozen food, the frozen foods that I have, first of all, starting with the one that doesn't go so well, is the brine shrimp. So you've seen the live brine shrimp. Now this is the, this is the frozen brine shrimp with garlic on top, which is supposed to help their, build up their immune system. But none of my pea puffers, I think, at all so far, apart from maybe one, has actually eaten any of these. So let me know if uh, your pea puffers eat these, if they enjoy the frozen ones. And here we see the frozen blood worms, which have gone down much better. So the one thing I have found with these blood worms is that when you're feeding them, when they go into the water, it's almost like the worms are kind of like hollowed out, like half of them have only got some blood worm meat in them. So I don't know if this is the quality of the product or whether you guys know of better uh, companies that are selling blood worms, but these ones, they'll eat them, but I don't think there's a whole lot in them sometimes, even though they look like they're packed out in the cubes. But I'm sure there's other frozen foods. If anyone has frozen foods that uh, I'm not mentioning out of these two, I'm sure there's plenty more. Uh, share your experiences with that as well so we can all learn from each other. So as you can see here, put the uh, pond snail down. And this guy managed to get a nip in before I could even get the camera set up. So this is what I mean by plonking them around the tank. You can see this one angling for different angles to have a little nibble. It'll probably come back around again in a second. And these are fairly big pond snails for the pea puffers. They're about the same size as their head. Uh, but these guys really don't care about the size of pond snails. If they can get at them, that's all they want to know. Has he had enough? Have you had enough, matey? Have you had enough? You're not camera shy, are you? No, you're not. No, you're not. And this is the one I set up earlier as well. In the... Uh, the leaves. So as you can see, he's... Trying to grab onto this one too. But is there anyone that seems to have noticed these snails? The other guys haven't noticed them yet. I just put a couple in there in different places. So you're seeing this guy. If I can get the light reflection out of the way. Really kind of maneuvering around and hunting. And it's so fun seeing doing this. He's watching go around the tank. And once they've got a couple of snails in their mouth and had a bit of a feed, they suddenly start looking around even more for snails, so you're having fun watching them size up their food. Is he going to go for another bit? Can you try and get another bit there? No, not now. Not quite yet. Go on. Go on. You know you want to. Hmm. But that's the snails, and that's different ways that you can feed them to make it more interesting for the puffers, rather than just putting them on the sand. If you have a look, this is one of the guys already seeking them out. That's one coming out there. Is he going to grab it? Yeah. Also, he's got a big one there. Don't know if he'll be able to eat all of that. Oh, maybe he will. Oh wow. Oh. One thing that anyone who's kept puffers knows is that these guys will go for the ridiculously longest worms, no matter how big they themselves are. It's kind of like the, one of the weird characteristics. And as these worms kind of float by, this is kind of why they're... I don't know if he's going to eat that. Oh, waste not, want not. You going to eat all that? Buddy? Oh, maybe you will. Oh, fair play. Oh, there you go. Easy in that one. Lastly, but not least, whilst we're watching uh, this little guy have a look at the snail under the leaf, how to feed your pea puffers in regards to them being the ones that have been bullied out of the food. So, certain things you can try is exactly this, putting snails on top of plants or in high places in your tank so they can have a chance when they're searching to actually get some food. 
because uh, snails are the natural kind of diet for pea puffers. So if you put those dotted about in high places, then eventually they're going to get some of those. And if you spread them out, they will all get some equal amounts. And your smallest one, your weakest one, the one who's not eating. Again, this doesn't really apply to internal parasites uh, stricken pea puffers, but if they're just being bullied out of food, you can put these snails dotted about. And this is my one that uh, does get bullied out of food a little bit. And she is looking around the leaves and hunting that way. Another way is getting a pipette. So if you haven't any idea what I'm talking about, I have a pipette somewhere. Just leave that with your view for a second. Where is it? In my drawer. My pet is that. Most of you are like, well, I know what a pipette is, but some of you may not know. So you suck up a couple of blood worms in this from the packet or frozen if they've been put into a pot and you wait till the puffer that's struggling comes along and you just plunk it into the water and then squeeze the worms out right in front of it and that will hopefully get it to feed. If it doesn't do that then you can just, if you've got brine shrimp and such like that that are live, just make sure that you hang around long enough that when they do come to the top of the tank you make sure they get a feeding rather than just you know hoping they get some, just making sure that they actually do. Because it's very easy to think when they look so similar that they've all eaten. But eventually you'll come to a point where you realise, oh actually maybe they're not. So you have to kind of particularly feed one with extra care. Lastly, I just want to talk about how much to feed your pea puffers, when to feed them and to make sure that you don't just leave loads of food wasting at the bottom of the tank. So if you're doing blood worms, for example, I now have in this tank five pea puffers. So uh, I'll explain in my next video update on the tank what happened there. So I only put in probably the equivalent of one to two worms in for these pea puffers, because whilst one of them will eat a few, others will only eat one, but that seems to be enough thing because they're quite small at the moment. So if you've got young ones, maybe baby ones, you want to feed them one or two worms. As they get bigger, you kind of just feed them for a few minutes, see how much they'll take. And anything else that doesn't get eaten, that's left at the bottom of the tank. Maybe within half an hour, take it out. They won't rot within half an hour. And if they're live food, they'll still be alive. So it's worth keeping in there for a little bit. Uh, if it's brine shrimp, my pea puffers eat anything between four and about six of these uh, at once. I was going to do a live feeding of that as well just now. But it turns out with this cone in there, they're more distracted with that than they were with brine shrimp. Otherwise, like I say, those copepods, pods, uh, they're kind of useless. They'll go within like five minutes, so don't even worry about feeding that to pea buffers unless you're really baby pea buffers, um, which just kind of would be handy for that size if they'd just been born. But when they're bigger and they're more adult size, like this crazy college kook, then you don't need to worry about that. Snails wise, they're a bit more interesting when you feed them because whilst it's fun to watch them feeding, they don't always eat the whole snail out of the shell. So when they're on the ground, you'll need to uh, make sure that they're still alive. If they start to get a bit moldy, then obviously they are dead. So then you take them out. And I usually give them about a day or two in a tank of snails before I start fishing them out. If they're completely empty shells, I don't usually hook them out until it's clean cleaning time for the tank. So they'll try and suck the snails out, but it's best to get rid of them once they've been killed or eaten. Just because they'll start to rot in the tank and it'll make the water quality bad for these little guys. And that is the last thing that we want. So yeah, it's been a, a bit of a throw together one for this week. Next week we can do an update on the whole tank. A lot has changed, a lot has happened, so that's going to be a really interesting video. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the effects of Prazi Pro, which I have bought from the States and how that works with the pea puffers, has it had a good effect, has it had any effect, we will see in the next episode. So yes, if you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button, give it a like, give us a comment if there's something you want to share, some advice you want to share about the diets of your pea puffers, maybe there's foods I haven't mentioned that you think are really worth putting on the list, and any general comments you've got from your own pea puffers really, that and the way they eat in their diets. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very, very soon as well as these guys. Bye.